Hello, this is The Review Crew. It's a community of YouTubers who collaborate on reviewing games. If you are a video game review YouTuber yourself, consider joining our Discord server and signing up for the next video. The invite link is in the description. We would love to have new members in the crew, so join if this seems appealing to you. In today's episode, we'll cover various ports and versions of Tetris. If you enjoy any of the reviewers featured, please check out their channels. With all that said, here's Tetris and its numerous ports. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm almost positive that you know what the NES Tetris is. Possibly the most iconic version of the game besides, of course, the Game Boy version. If you've seen the excellent gaming historian documentary on Tetris, you know that before 1989, the Tetris license was being thrown all over the place and there were so many variants of Tetris from many different companies. One of them was Bulletproof Software. They did eventually get to use the Tetris license and made some pretty cool games with it. But this game right here was made by a false Tetris license, but it led to Hank Rogers, who owned Bulletproof Software, to buy the official Tetris license and later start a new company, Blue Planet Software, and help the original creator of Tetris, Alexei Pagetnov, form the Tetris Company. I hope that wasn't too confusing. This game is based on BPS's earlier ports of the game to home computers, and it is very different from the Tetris we're used to today. For starters, there isn't even Koro Baniki as an option of the music, but the 8-bit version of Kalinka here is pretty great. This game is most notable for its strange controls. Down on the D-pad is rotate, and the A button is the hard drop. This is insanely disorienting and the Tetris equivalent of trying to write with your other hand. Also, there is no soft drop. So I'd recommend setting the game to a higher speed than you usually play. But still, if you want to fit in an L piece into a gap, you're gonna have to do some waiting. And waiting. And even more waiting on top of that. You may have noticed this life counter. Yeah, this version of Tetris has lives, so when you hit the top, you just lose a life. This feature didn't return in the official NES Tetris, and I'm not sure if any other retro Tetris has a life system quite like this. Yet another weird addition. Still, despite this probably being the most outdated version of Tetris, besides, well, the original version, I can't help but love this game. It's so weird and an important piece of gaming history. It's crappy, but because of its history and better versions available, it's such a charming game. Yeah, I get that there are a bunch of weird PC ports of questionable quality, but when you take one of those strange, technically unlicensed games and officially put it on a Nintendo console, I mean, that's cool. This game was considered illegal at one point, but overall, it's bad, though you gotta have bad games in your collection, and everyone has bad games they like. And now for the actual version of Tetris you've all been waiting for. It's Tetris. Sega's Tetris, to be exact. Originally released at the tail end of 1988 for Sega's System 16 hardware, it is a version of Tetris that has grown some notoriety over the years, no, not for the reasons that you would imagine it to. Indeed, the tale behind this version's inception is filled with sorrow, intrigue, mystery, and a whole lot of legal trouble. Though, for the purposes of this segment, I won't really be going over the history here, as there have been plenty of people who've already gone in depth with this and have done a fantastic job. However, all controversies aside, how does this version of Tetris hold up? To tell you the truth, it's just Tetris. Break it down. Sure, this version may be a bit bare bones, as you can only really rotate in one direction. But look at those sick ass backgrounds, don't they look cool? The Iguana one's my favorite, by the way. Though, in all seriousness, playing this version of Tetris is still quite a bit of fun after all these years. Sure, it might be pretty bare bones compared to pretty much every other version of Tetris that has released since. However, despite not technically getting an actual release until years later, the Maker Drive port kind of sucks ass with its twitchy controls and how incredibly downgraded it is compared to the System 16 original. 
However, M2 would later make an updated port of the game that completely overhauls many different aspects of the original port to be more in line with the System 16 original. Not only that, but they also managed to implement multi-directional movement, which is very much appreciated. It actually reminds me a lot of that fan-made conversion of uh, Sega Sonic Bros that was done a while back for the Mega Drive. Now, I know a lot of people complained about the way that the game controls, and to be honest, I don't really have the same issues as I did with the original Mega Drive port. Though it could be that I'm playing it on the Analog SG. Though, if you want to know the best way to check out the original Sega Tetris, definitely give Tetris Collection a look. It was done by the aforementioned Emulation Alumni M2, and it's an overall pretty fantastic collection. Not only does it feature the System 16 and Mega Drive versions of the game, but also features a bunch of other cool stuff. And definitely the gem of the night, Tetris New Century is a bit of a reimagining of the original Sega Tetris, though it offers a bunch of cool modes, and it's honestly my preferred Tetris game to play to be honest, well at least Sega Tetris game. I especially really enjoyed the 40 lines mode as it allows you to play a quick game of Tetris. I also really enjoyed the music selection as it definitely pumped me up to play some Tetris. And as much as I hate Game A, the rendition of it in Tetris New Century is actually one of my favorites. Overall, I quite like the Sega Tetris games. Mind you, there's a plethora of different Sega Tetris related titles I could cover. However, I think I'm going to save that for another day. Tetris for Game Boy. Yep, indeed, it's Tetris for the Game Boy. It's one of the most well-known Tetrises. Tetris? Tetri? Regardless, it's not only the most important Tetris, but possibly THE most important Tetris. Releasing not only as a launch title for the Game Boy, but came with them, so everybody owned it. A lot of people probably got introduced to Tetris through this, and many people still play this version. But as important of an early Tetris as it is, it's still an early Tetris. It's got all of two modes, Marathon and Clear 40 Lines, Type A and B respectively. It controls fine, it's Tetris. Of course, some may enjoy this version of Tetris because it's before the Tetris company started regulating Tetris. There's only one next up block shown. The moment the block hits the ground, it's staying, and whatever block you have, you're stuck with as there's no hold. It's the most basic of Tetris. It's Tetris. Tetris for the Game Boy. You know what else is Tetris for the Game Boy? Tetris DX. When the Game Boy Color started circulating, Nintendo started upgrading and updating multiple Game Boy games with color-enhanced versions. Link's Awakening DX comes to mind. Tetris DX is part of that. So you'd think it's the superior version of Tetris, right? Well, before I tell you why you're wrong, let me tell you why you were almost right. It's actually got a battery backup, meaning your scores are saved, and with this is three name registration slots. This version has four modes, along with a completely new menu, along with a new ultra mode, which puts you under a time limit and a two-player CPU battle. The music is way more dynamic, having several speeds depending on how stacked up everything is. And on top of it all, you don't even need a Game Boy Color. This is a black card, meaning it can be played on an original Game Boy, getting all the advanced features the original doesn't have. Now, with all those added features, why would this not be the better Tetris? It doesn't have the Tetris theme. It doesn't have the Tetris theme?! Oh, but it does! At the results screen. And it doesn't even play the small clip unless you get a really high score, of which I've only done once and was unable to do it again to get any footage of it. The music that is here isn't exactly bad by any means, I don't really hate one of the tracks, but the lack of the Tetris theme just ruins this for me. And the colors, you can get almost the same thing out of just playing the original Tetris on a Game Boy Color instead of buying a whole nother Tetris. But me, that's just me complaining that my copy didn't work. Game Boy Tetris only exists as a novelty these days, but yeah, it's a good one to fall back on. The point of Tetris Game Boy was to bring Tetris on the go, and, well... Checks out. Tetris. 
Tetris is a 1989 puzzle game released for the Game Boy, blah blah blah, generic loser talking about Tetris. But what if I told you there's a game with two times the Tetris? Tetris 2. The first Tetris 2 was released in 1990 and developed by... for the ZX Spectrum. However, I'll be focusing on the Tetris 2 released by Nintendo for the NES. The gameplay of Tetris 2 is an odd mix between Tetris and Dr. Mario. First of all, the tetromino shapes are pretty weird. There's already blocks when you start the game that you have to clear, similar to Dr. Mario, and you also have to worry about colors. To me this seems kinda confusing, especially when compared to the OG Tetris. But I guess this does make sense since Tetris 2 was more of a game for people who have already mastered the original Tetris. It even says on the box art, take on a tougher Tetris challenge. So, what do I think about the game? Well, first off, I'm not a puzzle game expert so my opinion doesn't matter. Anyway, unless you have any idea of what you're doing, you won't have any idea of what you're doing. With a guide, you could probably make some sense of the game, but without one, this game makes no sense. The music also isn't anything to write home about. To me, Tetris 2 is mediocre, but if you're really into puzzle games and Tetris, sure, I'd recommend it. Anyway, good night. Tetris Battle Gaiden was released only in Japan on the Super Famicom. The term Gaiden is thrown around in media a lot. It means a spin-off that doesn't have to follow the rules of previous entries. This game takes Tetris and applies the Puyo Puyo formula to it. There are a handful of chibi-looking characters to choose from, and of course, the single-player mode has your character going through a path defeating said characters in a best-of-three match of versus Tetris. This game shakes up the Tetris formula quite a bit. Since this is classic Tetris, there's no piece outline, but there is a system for seeing your next piece. But it's not what you might think. The pieces are shared. If you want your opponent to get an L piece that wouldn't work, take your time in placing your piece. Need that line piece to complete your Tetris? Hurry up and place the next piece faster so you can get it before your opponent does. You may have noticed these spheres inside some of the tetrominoes. These are called crystals. If you build up crystals, you can release an attack on your opponent. The more crystals you collect, of course, your attack will be stronger. This game isn't too casual friendly. Yeah, I admit, I'm no Tetris genius, and I play rather casually. This game in single player is brutal. To get anywhere, you gotta have complete focus. This isn't one of those chill Tetris games that you can zone out to while listening to something. No, you need fighting game focus for Battle Gaiden. The amount of strategy needed for this game can catch you off guard. It can get very frustrating at times, but those power-ups are really fun to use. The gameplay mechanics are so good that even though it's a challenging game, I want to get better and keep playing. There aren't any other modes though, like say, Marathon, so if you want a definitive Tetris experience on the SNES slash Super Famicom, this isn't it. Go with Super Tetris 3. But if you're bored of the same old Tetris formula and love unique import games, then Tetris Battle Gaiden is the game for you. Tetris is one of those games that everybody knows about. It's so simple, and that has allowed it to stay relevant for over 30 years. Blocks fall, you clear the lines, but you all know that. If anything, one of the biggest issues with Tetris is how little the game itself changes between different versions of the game. The formula works, you know, don't fix what's not broken. If anything, most new releases of Tetris are just excuses to have one of the best-selling game series of all time on the new consoles. Despite this, there are still Tetris games that try to do something new and exciting. Or in this case, a Tetris game that isn't even a Tetris game. Released in 1995, Tetris Attack may use the series name, but this is not a Tetris game. I'll be real brief with the history here. In Japan, this was a game called Panel Depon. Its aesthetic was very... Japanese. These anime fairies in a cool fantasy world. However, international versions of the game replaced these characters with Yoshi! Thankfully, the gameplay wasn't changed at all. Uh, they renamed the game Tetris Attack, even though the game bears no relation to the series, leading Tetris Company co-founder Hank Rogers to regret giving Nintendo the license to use the name. Okay, that's enough history of the title, let's talk about the game itself. 
Using a cursor, you have to arrange colored blocks into horizontal and vertical rows. Matching together three or more blocks of the same color will destroy them. Blocks above cleared lines will fall, which can be used to chain reactions if they touch other matching blocks. You can also get combos, clearing more than three blocks in a single move. As the stage progresses, the blocks begin to rise towards the top of the screen. Should the blocks touch the top, the game will be over. Much like actual Tetris, it's incredibly simple and very addicting. You don't need a tutorial or anything, it's so easy to just pick up and play. And thankfully, there's pretty decent variety with the gameplay as well. There's several different gameplay modes, such as the story mode, which pits the player up against a series of computer-controlled opponents. This mode is super adorable, by the way. Endless mode, which I feel is self-explanatory. Timed mode challenges you to score as many points as possible within a two-minute time limit. Stage clear mode takes the player through a series of stages in which the objective is to clear all blocks underneath a boundary line. There's also some multiplayer modes, but I don't have anyone to play with. I do think it would be a ton of fun to play this game with friends, though. The visuals are wonderful. This is my favorite looking Super Nintendo game. Yoshi is one of my favorite game characters of all time, and his world and all its inhabitants are so unique. It's a shame this version of the game can't be released anymore, because the aesthetic is phenomenal, paired with some great remixes of tracks from Yoshi's Island. Tetris Attack actually had some sequels released, although they could no longer use the Tetris name. The series would go on to be named Puzzle League, only five Puzzle League games have been released since 2000. It's clear that Nintendo has moved past this series. They had several Pokemon-themed puzzle games on the 3DS, and Tetris 99 is a Switch exclusive. Thankfully though, the original Japanese panel to Pawn was just released on the Switch's Super Nintendo Online app. It's the exact same game I reviewed here, only I'm docking points off of it because it doesn't have the super cool Yoshi aesthetic. Thankfully, Tetris Attack isn't that expensive of a game either. You can pick it up for around 15 to 20 bucks loose on eBay, and I highly recommend it. One of my favorite Super Nintendo games of all time. Tetris Sphere is my favorite weird Tetris spin-off that I've seen nobody talk about. Why? Well, the concept is just so wacky and weird. They try making this weird Sphere-focused game, but it also makes it way more interesting. Imagine if this was just a basic Tetris, nobody would care. Actually, there is a regular Tetris on N64, but I've never seen anyone talk about that too. Well, before I actually tell you about the game itself, here's a small bit of development history that I think makes this game possibly the most interesting Tetris game from this generation. Tetris Spear is developed by H2O Entertainment, who originally was planning to release it on the Atari Jaguar, and Tetris Spear was originally called Fear. Then Nintendo bought the rights to the game, same from being released on the Atari Jaguar, because being released on the Atari Jaguar is a fate worse than death for most games. The game would then release in August 1997 in North America and February 1998 in Europe. The game sold decently and got positive reception at launch, so clearly plenty of people enjoy the game. So maybe I'll enjoy it too. Nope. The first half hour I played the game, I was miserable, confused, and I barely got any enjoyment out of it. Then I slowly started to get some enjoyment, until finally, after over an hour of playing, I was finally enjoying myself, but I still would have preferred playing a different game. So what's the gameplay of Tetris Spear? Well, instead of the normal Tetris gameplay of clearing lines, you have to have three or more of a certain type of block touch when you drop a piece. If you mess up three times, you lose. Does that sound confusing? Well, if it does, that's because the game just feels incoherent and messy. The problem is that the idea of it being a spear is intriguing, but it isn't actually enjoyable to play. With the spear, you're constantly rotating around it, you never see everything at once. That's extremely problematic in the puzzle game focused on clearing areas, because it means I have to then rotate around the spear. Mind that with how the tutorial mostly just tells you what to do, but doesn't let you try it. And you have a game that's pretty unenjoyable at first. With tutorials and games, it's usually pretty smart to let your player try the mechanics so you can get a decent idea of what they're doing. Or if you aren't going to let the player try the mechanics, just let the player skip the tutorial. There are some massive positives to Tetris Spear though. One of those positives is how dang charming the game is. You have these robots that have this look to them that is just kind of cool and cartoony. They all have names and large eyes. You always get to pick a robot. Based on what I've experienced, this is purely a cosmetic change. Another great thing about Tetris Spear is that it has a great soundtrack. The soundtrack has this techno style and it works so well in my opinion. It really motivated me to keep playing because even if I wasn't enjoying the game a ton, at least I can enjoy a great soundtrack. The final positive 
so that after you play the game enough, it can be fun. Like I said earlier, I never really fell in love with the game, I'd still rather play a different game, but Tetris Spirit isn't awful, it has a steep learning curve, but if you try hard enough, you can squeeze some fun out of it. Do I think it's worth the effort to try and squeeze the fun out of it? Nope. Tetris Spear is just another failed experiment in my opinion. And it'll always be one of those games that's forever stuck in my mind for some reason. This is one I'm more familiar with. Trade some game for the GBA version back in elementary school. What I traded it for, I don't remember, but it's probably for the best lest I cry overnight about trading some now expensive game for Tetris. But for now, let's focus on the one I didn't have. The basic story is, yes, you heard me right, story. The Tetris people have realized the sun will at some point become a supernova and decide in order to ensure survival of future generations that they must find a new habitable planet. How does this relate to Tetris? I wasn't listening. But at least it led to some character customization. Regardless, it's a nice looking Tetris with the stuff you'd expect. It's got all the modes, up to four player verses, with both knockout and race mode. Although I accidentally chose race mode and never tried out Ooh. knockout like I meant to. Is there is there like a, a battle mode? No, no. Not that I know of at least. This game, this game is ultra gay. The models for the Tetris blocks look real nice. Backgrounds are backgrounds. It's a pretty nice looking Tetris. Musically, however, it's mostly ambient stuff. And it has this whisper every time you clear a line. And that's nice and all. No doubt somebody's gonna love the Tetris ASMR experience. You don't know quite how stressful playing Tetris is while a whispering voice slowly counts down while you're playing. I've got a later bundle version that comes with the game upgraded with Xbox Live features along with Star Wars The Clone Wars, but I don't really have a way to test those, now do I? An interesting bit is the history section, and while I'm not the best person to go through fact-checking all this stuff, it's pretty in-depth, and I particularly want to point out that they say handheld video game system. Yes, it's like this even in the GameCube version, yet they can say Spectrum Holobyte. I'll let you stew on that one while we move over to the Game Boy Advance version, which is mostly the same thing. Not much is told in-game, mind you, but it's a good version of Tetris, dare I say, my favorite. Background looks a bit odd, but it looks nice enough. Music is a bit lacking because the Game Boy Advance is usual sound hardware, and Tetris theme, I think, I think not! Instead, play faster, which is the actual Tetris theme. Of course, these two games are the first to be fully regulated by the Tetris company, so it got a lot of criticism for what are now normal Tetris features. The ability to rotate pieces so they never settle in place. The ability to hold pieces, the usual. Basically, the only way I'd ever beat Tetris. But if you really hate these features, I'll tell you a little secret. All these modes on the front, they're not all of them. If you hold L and press select while on the screen, a secret popular Tetris mode will appear, which essentially removes all the quality of life features giving you that ass-kicking experience you want. Oh. Tetris has been a remade, re-released, recreated, reimagined, recoded so many times it's practically lost all meaning. Now, there have been many outstanding versions of this classic that my fellow reviewers pointed out, I'm sure, so I decided to cover some of the most weird and redundant ports that I could find. What could be more redundant than this? Yes, this is some random LCD handheld that I have lying around. It's pretty comfortable in the hands and it plays well enough. Uh, the game is displayed on this small vertical screen and you have to control the game with a D-pad and two buttons used to rotate the shapes. I have nothing else to add. It's bare bones Tetris on a cheap hunk of plastic, but it's still not that bad. It has music too, and man, I could jam out to this all day, holy sh**. But maybe you want to play Tetris on a more premium LCD system. Well, allow me to introduce Pokemon Tetris for the Pokemon Mini. Yes, this does in fact exist. This console played very, very basic games on a really tiny screen and was made to cash in on the Tamagotchi craze of the time. But hey, having a simple game like Tetris on the Pokemon Mini wasn't too bad of an idea. It plays like regular old Tetris, nothing crazy here, but it does have one special <coughs> gimmick. 
As you clear rows of blocks, you start to catch Pokemon off to the side. It's pretty minuscule and it, it doesn't add much at all. I, I didn't even notice it really. The only Pokemon related thing they added visually are some Pikachu tails on the side, that's, that's it. Yeah, this port is worthless. But how about we move away from uh, LCD consoles for this last game. Instead, how about we go inside of the game. And no, I'm not talking about Tetris Effect VR, no, no, no. I'm talking about V Tetris for the Virtual Boy. But this was released exclusively in Japan. Uh, here in America, we got 3D Tetris instead. This is yet again very standard Tetris. No BS aside from it being in VR, if you want to call it that. Uh, from what I can tell, pieces protrude out farther to your eyes, making them stick out into the foreground. And I guess the stars in the background have depth too. This is kind of weird to emulate because the falling piece, it doesn't exactly line up with everything else, making it a bit awkward to play, but I didn't mind. I actually quite liked the aesthetic of this one. I like the starry background, and I love the little elf dudes and all the other characters. But again, there's, like, no reason to play this. Why did I make this? Tetris DS is- I'm already doing Tetris DS. What? I've already taken Tetris DS. Uh, already taken? Fuse! Yeah, he's already got a Tetris DS from Nintendo. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about THQ Tetris DS. You see, for a short while in the sixth generation of consoles, THQ started publishing some Tetris titles. See Tetris Worlds for that. And when the DS came out, THQ quickly put in development a Tetris DS game. Close to the end of development, however, legal issues arose between THQ and the Tetris company, and all we're left with is this leaked debug build. It's got a bunch of new modes, including new ones to take advantage of the dual screens, Tetris Trash and Tetris Draw. One is Tetris with two boards. Bad placement on your current board? Just throw that in the trash! <laughs> and then, I start eating garbage! <laughs> and it all stacks up down there. The latter is Tetris, except you draw the shapes in a hotline-style Tetris. I'm clumsy and I'm not good at it, thus I hate it. There's also Tetris Warning, which is just... Tetris, except it takes up both screens. Otherwise, it's Tetris as you expect it. Top screen shows the whole board, while the bottom screen shows a zoom in. It's got all the regulations in place. It's Tetris. An unreleased Tetris. However, moving the pieces with the D-pad is imprecise. When holding down a direction, it begins rapidly moving in that direction. This is an important thing to get right. Too long a wait, and it might as well not be there at all. Too soon, and misplacing Tetris pieces becomes common. This is the latter. I misplace a ton, and it's very problematic. Lots of music options, though. Multiple themes with multiple renditions. Too bad the Versus CPU doesn't work, though. Anyways, that's just about all this game holds. If I disappointed you and you wanted to see the real Tetris DS, then take it away, Apex Jeff. Tetris began in 1984, but it really started in 2006 with Tetris DS. It's so simple. It's Tetris on DS. There isn't really much to the history of this title. It really is just Tetris on the DS. Developed by Nintendo Software Planning and Development. I can't find much on this division. It went defunct in 2015 and then merged with Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development. Anyway, as far as I can tell, Nintendo SPD mainly co-produced games with external developers. Not really much else interesting to say. On to the game, which is fantastic. I still think this is the best Tetris game ever made. Could it be the inner child in me who played this game on countless road trips talking? There's only one way to find out. There's a few different modes to choose from, but starting off with Marathon Mode, it's just Tetris. Just a really solid version of Tetris. It's got this sick NES aesthetic. Now this was before Nintendo started shoving this nostalgia down everyone's throats. At the time, this felt fresh, you know? Depending on how long you last in marathon mode, you'll scroll through several different Nintendo aesthetics. From Mario to Zelda and even Metroid, each one has a fantastic remix to accompany them as well. Aside from that, all the extra modes are wonderful. They all have unique twists on the Tetris formula. 
Catch has you making 4x4 blocks with Tetris pieces falling from the top of the screen. Mission mode's just marathon, but it gives you small tasks you have to beat to complete. Puzzle mode gives you an incomplete Tetris board and a few Tetris pieces. You have to figure out where the pieces go to finish the board. It's also based on Yoshi's Cookie. Remember Yoshi's Cookie? Yeah, that's what I thought. Touch mode has you using a stylus to move Tetris pieces around, and it also has a mission-based structure which gives you certain tasks you have to complete before you move on. Uh, aside from that, there's a few multiplayer modes that I can't play because I don't have any friends. But it uses DS download play, so even with a 3DS, you and some friends can still get together and play this game with only one copy. So is Tetris DS really the best Tetris game? Oh, well, I think it is. It plays like a dream, has some fantastic NES remixes, and just screams Nintendo. There was clearly a lot of passion and care put into this game. It was a game Nintendo obviously really cared about. And it's one of my favorite games on the Nintendo DS. It's definitely worth picking up. It's not too expensive, but DS games are starting to be getting to rise in price. People are starting to feel really nostalgic for this little thing, so if you want Tetris DS, I would recommend getting it now before it gets really expensive. Tetris Flash was released October 3rd, 2007. It was a fantastic game that received critical praise. I'm kidding. It got some mixed reception. Not every Tetris game would be a masterpiece. I was first introduced to this game when I saw Video Game Donkey's video on Tetris and thought, what could go wrong with this game? I then found out it was delisted and wouldn't be able to play it. After the topic for this video became Tetris, I was going to do Puyo Puyo Tetris, then Tetris CDI, but I decided not to cover Puyo Puyo, and CDI is a pain to emulate. So I went on an epic journey and sailed the seven seas until I was able to locate a ROM for Tetris Splash. After this epic quest, I was ready to play some Tetris Splash. So what is the selling point of Tetris Splash? Well, that's fish in the background. Was that worth $10 at the time, which is equal to $12.73 today? No, because this game lacks content. For a game about water, it is awfully dry. You have some basic single-player gameplay that acts as your standard Tetris, and you have some multiplayer. You have local and online. When you play against your friends, it is just basic Tetris, but there's fish in the background. It's just standard Tetris. Nothing new or exciting happens here. At most, this is like a $5 game you and your friends buy so you can chill out and play some Tetris while talking. When you purchase this game, you're purchasing it for the fish. At the time, you go to the store and buy a copy of Tetris DS. Well, that game was probably more expensive. At least it's one of the best Tetris games and you can take it on the go with you. There is no reason to go back and play Tetris Splash. In fact, I don't think there ever was a reason to play it. The game also has a screensaver, but it's not worth it at all. I've held off the entire segment on making this joke because everyone else already said it, but Tetris Splash, more like Tetris Trash. Okay, I'm gonna be pretty brief here. Out of all the Tetris games I've looked at so far in this review crew, Party has got to be the weakest one, because nothing about it really stands out. It is a basic and bare-bones version of Tetris. So I guess we should jump into it. Tetris Party was a WiiWare title developed by Hudson and released in 2008. Uh, now because it's a WiiWare title, there's no way to play it if you didn't buy it when it came out. Thankfully, two years later, they added some more content and released it physically under the name Tetris Party Deluxe. What makes it deluxe? Well, let's find out. It, it's just Tetris. But it, it's not interesting. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad version of Tetris by any means, but there's nothing that makes this game stand out amongst the sea of better Tetris games. If anything, there's three things on the box that stand out to me compatible with Wii Wheel, Wii Balance Board, and Wii Speak. The Wii Speak was obviously meant for online play, which has since gone defunct on the Wii. And Wii Balance Board? I can't imagine it would be terribly fun to play Tetris Party with a Wii Balance Board. I know technically this means I haven't played the entire game as a whole since I'm not playing the Balance Board mode, but come on, if somebody knocked on your door asking if you wanted to play Tetris Party with a Balance Board, would you let him in? The other modes here just aren't very interesting either, it's all stuff we've seen in other Tetris games before. Like there's a bomb mode, which is a throwback to Tetris 2. Remember Tetris 2? There's a ton of multiplayer modes too, but come on, do I look like a guy who has friends? Come on. Now, something I can talk about is the music. The Tetris theme remix featured here is so good. Hey, wanna listen to some tunes?
it definitely sounds more Russian. All the tracks here are bangers though. It's a nice little soundtrack. Tetris Party Deluxe is just underwhelming, but if you want a super simple, basic, doesn't do anything original Tetris game, I guess I recommend it, but not for its going price. Yeah, this game will run you anywhere from $25 to $40, and for a game as boring as this, that's just not worth it. Hello world, my name is Denominator, and today we're playing Tetris with a twist. <laughs> Guys, guys, come on now. I said a twist. A twist. How hard is it to do a twist? I said a twist! Look, if your device can't play some form of Tetris, can you even say it really exists? It doesn't play Tetris. Ah! Everybody's played a Tetris at some point, and if you haven't, well, you've heard of it now. You're welcome. You can't beat the classic block drop and formula. Just look at all these imitators who've tried to- oh. Look, I like Tetris, but sometimes I want to play Tetris without actually playing Tetris, you know? Like, the good old-fashioned game is plenty good addictive fun, but even just a single extra mechanic can go a long way to spice things up a bit. And I think that's why I've been always interested in the idea of 3D Tetris. Now, I could just play this if I no longer want to use my eyes to see, but then I wouldn't be able to play Tetris anymore, so instead... Why not just play Tetris on a console that has 3D and doesn't hurt my eyes? Most of the time. Now if only such a game existed. What's up? Oh great, it's one of those YouTuber clone things. Alright, what are we gonna call you? You may call me... Blaynad. What? I'm basically you, but I don't need glasses. Also, I wear a hat. <gasps> I don't have a hat! Yeah, well, anyway, I hear you've been looking to play 3D Tetris. Yes, that's a very weirdly specific thing for you to know about me. Well, lucky for you, I have a solution right here. Take a look. Whoa! Hmm. Tetris who? This is Tetris Axis for the Nintendo 3DS, a pairing that must have been made in heaven. Just look at this. 3D Tetris. 3D Tetris. 3D Tetris. I don't even need to read the rest of the box. I know exactly what I'm getting. Finally, it's Tetris in 3D! I should have been more specific. Yep, this is the one feature that puts the axis in Tetris Axis, and yes, I am just as confused as you are. This is such a weird feature. Again, given that this is on the 3DS, all it really does is make the playing field harder to see. Why would I do that unless I wanted to brag on somebody? Hey, you call yourself a real gamer? I played Tetris Axis with the field pointing all the way up. Oh yeah? Well, I played Tetris Axis with the field pointing all the way to the left. <laughs> Yeah, so? In 2D, you absolute madman. Okay, all jokes aside, I really do like this game. There are so many modes and options in this package, it'll take you some time to get through them all. There are over 20 different ways to Tetris here, including a completely new one, Fever Mode. Basically, you get a minute to score as high as possible in a really thin board that has items, coins, and unique obstacles along the way. It's a nice addition, but since there's no endless mode, I feel like the fun ends really before it starts. As for the other modes, we have the standard marathon, CPU battle, and survival, along with a bunch of party modes called Jigsaw, Shadow Wide, Wii Fit, Tower Climber, Bomb Bliss, Stage Racer, Capture, Master, Sprint, and... Don't you say it! Augmented Reality Games. <laughs> By themselves, these are just altered versions of Tetris with one thing added in, like bombs to clear lines faster or blocks that drop at full speed from the beginning. There are a few modes that do have extra replay value, like with Shadow Fit, you can create your own shadow for you to attempt to fill with blocks, and Jigsaw, which lets you... Oh wow, this is amazing. The closest mode to a full 3D Tetris is Fit, which has you dropping preset blocks onto a plane that's constantly coming closer to you. If you're gonna do something so specifically limited like this, why not just make 3D Tetris while you're at it? Well, to round out the package, we have multiplayer, which works with online and download play. Nice to see they thought of everything. Ha! <sighs> <laughs> Beat you again. Hey, hey, that's not fair, alright? My board was turned all the way to the right! 
Either way, all of these modes are insanely customizable, letting you change most everything for each mode individually. But is there anything else that really tells you that you're playing Tetris on the 3DS? Yeah, I guess that works. So, uh, Laynad, the episode's over. Do you just, uh, disappear now or something? Well, I do play Tetris now, so technically I do exist. As long as I don't stop play- Nineteen eighty nine. What a year that was, especially for the game Tetris. When it got its original release on the Game Boy as a packing title for the handheld, not sure if you knew about this title because it's only one of the best selling games of all time. <coughs> for a while, though, there were mainly ports of already existing games like Tetris 2 or Tetris Attack and Tetris 2? You're telling me they made a second Tetris game? Next you're gonna tell me, god damn it. For a while, there wasn't an original Tetris game made for exclusively for a handheld. Then Tetris DS drops its dirty little head and holy fuck it's Tetris on the DS. Holy fuck it's got Zelda and Super Mario. What the fuck? Now, you might be thinking about how pointless this whole segment is, because uh, I've only got five minutes, but have you ever wondered how it took until 2006 to get Tetris on mobile phones? Yes, these are dying questions, guys, I swear. I guess it may seem stupid now, as these things are our livelihoods, but back then, phones looked like this. Oh, how we have progressed. From there, the lovely people at E, 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 E took it upon themselves to make more Tetris games to mobile. iPod Tetris, Tetris EA Mobile, Tetris Blitz, and Tetris Citation Needed. Jesus Louises, do we need this much Tetris? I guess not since all of those closed down some time ago. Then what version could we possibly be? All hail ne network. What the fuck with the, th the fuck with the three, bro? the hell for bringing back tetris on our favorite lcd brick and it's certainly tetris believe it or not it's tetris now what could possibly make this version stand out from the likes of hatris it's got different themes like monstrous whoop de doo it's also got left hand controls you hear that tetris do left hand controls yeah um I don't have much to say, it's really just Tetris, but on mobile. Wow, what an achievement. What do you even want me to talk about? About how this game is perfect because of its simple, easy to pick up and play yet addicting nature? Nah, I don't really think so. At least it's probably better than Hatchris. Seriously, Hatchris? So, what did you think of Review Crew? Please make sure that if you like the creator to check out his channel. Again, if you're a reviewer yourself, please check out our Discord and consider participating. Say hi to me and the other reviewers. We would love to have you. Well, this video isn't quite over yet, because I'm the host this time, and I get to have my own little segment at the end. Here, I'm going to show off a whole bunch of neat little bootlegs of Tetris. This is the Bootleg Variety Hour, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, you know the Sega Genesis Tetris game that was cancelled, but a few copies slipped out, and that's why it's the one million dollar game we know and love today, right? But since Sega Genesis players didn't have a Tetris game, well, maybe seven kids in Japan did, most of the world had Blockout. You can compare this game to 3D Tetris on the Virtual Boy, or maybe even Weltris, but it is a different game from both of those. There were many ports of this at the time, but one bootlegger put it on the NES. Yes, that's right. A somewhat knockoff of Tetris and or Weltris was bootlegged again and onto much inferior hardware. Enter 3D Block. Even though this game is fake, you can't deny that this is cool for NES hardware. The same blockout gameplay you probably are just okay with. Now downgraded to the NES. The NES has probably the most bootlegs and multi-carts out of any console, specifically the Famicom. When you talk about NES bootlegs, 9 times out of 10, you're talking about some weird cart from Hong Kong, or something from Europe for the infamous Dendi. 
While in regions where piracy runs rampant, and Nintendo doesn't have nearly as much support as they do in that country than ours, Systems like the Famicom can still be popular well into later generations. So enter Pokey Tetris. It's similar to Tengen's Tetris, but Pikachu's in the middle of the screen, and you can pick either Tetrominoes, not Tetrominoes, or double not Tetrominoes. Can't really go wrong here. Now this is a seriously cool piece of gaming history. This is a version of Tetris that runs on Cherry Master hardware. Yes, that's right. Tetris running on the same hardware as a video slot machine. These games were called secret gambling machines and run rampant in areas where gambling was strictly outlawed. They were unassuming arcade machines with bootleg worse versions of games like Pac-Man or Space Invaders, but when a secret switch is flipped or a button combo is entered, they revert to the Cherry Master mode and you can gamble. Super cool, right? This isn't the worst version of Tetris, but it certainly is odd. There's some weird pieces thrown in. The game plays pretty slowly and the playing field is pretty odd. This wasn't meant to be a good Tetris game. It was meant to be a good cover-up, and I'd say it works. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff. This is puzzled for the Neo Geo. Yeah, that's right. A Tetris knockoff was made by SNK for the MVS slash AES and CD systems. To win, you can't play like you usually would in Tetris. You have to use the stolen Tetrominos to clear the bricks that are there from the start and make it so this blimp can escape. You should make single lines fast instead of building up to get a Tetris. These pieces also don't float midair, which is weird. The controls are stiff, and the pieces flip kind of awkwardly. This game also has a pretty high difficulty curve, but honestly, aside from ripping off the Tetris blocks, physics, and mechanics, this game is pretty different. Is it a knockoff? Yes and no. And for our last bootleg game, we fittingly have Final Tetris. This is yet another arcade game, but it was only released in South Korea. This is probably the greatest Tetris game of all time. This is the only game on the planet where Michael Jackson battles a literal dog in sunglasses in a game of Tetris. And if he wins, he kills the dog. This is peak bootleg. This is why people like myself like to look for strange and downright absurd games that infringe on copyright. Well, thanks for joining me for this episode of Review Crew. The next Review Crew will be on games from the Pac-Man franchise, so if that interests you, head on down to our server and have a blast making your entry and talking to the community.